Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you to our worship service this morning. We also welcome those who join us on our live feed uh, from our Facebook page. Um, as you should every Sunday, take a look at this middle section of your bulletin and it'll tell you what the things that are coming up. We do have our uh, meeting this afternoon after church. Um, I would like for you to go ahead and take those registration pads that are at the end of the pew and sign those. <clears throat> and if you are visiting with us, if you could put enough information that we can be in touch with you, we would appreciate that. And Lana? Uh, the breakfast is coming up too. We'll... What date is that? December 2nd, yes. the breakfast will be. Okay, so there is a meeting on December 2nd. Um, I know uh, the pastor has a couple of announcements that he would like to make. A couple of housekeeping items. Uh, one on the table up here, a uh, list is floating through the congregation, is the membership role of the church. Linda has spent numerous hours. Uh, preparing that list. So if you could look over your family's names and the dates that we have for joining the church, we are going to be celebrating membership anniversaries this next year. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we have some accurate records. There are currently 472 registered members here. And so we are trying to also find some of the members who are lost. So if you know of someone who has not been in church in a number of years, uh, please let us know. I know that Jim Lagerberg has right now one of the longest term members at 77 years uh, in the church. So congratulations, Jim. He says he has his baptismal certificate and membership certificate if we need to verify it. <laughs> so please check the list and write down uh, any corrections. The other one you received a directory. Linda has spent a number of hours also updating people's information. And so the one thing is about directories, as soon as we printed it, we know it's wrong. Someone has moved, their phone number has changed, someone's not in here who should be in here, someone's in here who should not be in here. So I would going to leave this copy up here on the table, so please correct anything that is, uh, needs to be changed. And today is our Pledge Sunday, and so each of you received a pledge card in your bulletin. And so you will be invited to come forward and put it in the basket. If you are a visitor, uh, we understand that you make pledges and commitments in other, other places. And so we invite you to watch the congregation. Or if you feel like the Spirit of the Lord is leading you, to come forward during that time. And then also you receive several other things. One is a proposed budget from the church council. So please read that over. It will be discussed at the breakfast on December 2nd. And then also a list of bylaw changes. And those will be discussed and voted on on December 2nd. If you have any questions, talk to Pat Carpenter. Pat, you want to wave? She is the president of the congregation. Or talk to Bryce. Okay. Uh, Dawn, do you have an announcement? Is that microphone not working? Yeah. yeah. Talk anyway, to Bryce. Uh, there won't be a mission committee meeting this, this afternoon. There is no missions committee meeting this afternoon. Mary Ann? I'll repeat whatever you say, because that microphone's not working. Yes, uh, in Pat Carino's absence, um, I would like to call your attention to the baby closet box at the front of the sanctuary. We give away about 40 bags of toiletries and things for the women who come in, and we would appreciate toothpaste, combs, toothbrushes, lotion, shampoo, anything that you might want to donate. We would so much appreciate that. Pat started this about three or four years ago, and they are so pleased when we give them that bag. No Bible study or any activities this Wednesday. Okay. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? You're raising your hand. Don, I'll get you the mic. For everyone who bought apple pies from the youth group, they are packaged and ready for pickup in Homer Hall. We had a fabulous time making them yesterday, just saying. And we also have bags of apple pie filling for sale by donation, and one bag can fill two pies. All right. I 
I see Mary Ann's hand back there. We just need to say that we would need everything before December 1st because the last Monday in November, the last Monday in November is when we fill the bags. So you need it before December 1st? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. I don't see anybody else waving hands or anything. So why don't we get up and greet one another? And if you don't know somebody, what are you going to do? Introduce yourself. Thank you.
bulletin and it's Psalm 100, which is a summons that all lands shall come and praise the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, and praise His name. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Heavenly Father, we do praise your holy name. For not only have you created the world and all the mechanisms and mechanical ways of it, O oh Lord, but you are the one who has intended for its purpose to glorify your holy name, to feed all the animals and creatures of the earth, and Lord, to be gathered in in the great harvest yet to come. We are thankful, O oh Lord, for the harvest that you have already done the fruits of the field and the trees, the vine and the branches, O Lord, and the harvest of saints which you have already gathered into Christ the garden. Lord, as we gather here today, gather our attention, our hearts, our praise for your holy name, and unite them with the worship of your church around the world through the work of your Holy Spirit. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please be seated. And turn to another traditional favorite, and thank we all our God, hymn number 14. Back surgery and needs recovery. 
Also pray for Bruno. Bruno needs our encouragement and also our prayers. And if you would like to, please call him. Uh, he would love some homemade cooked meals. Uh, and so if you have that gift of hospitality and kindness, please remember Bruno. Are there other prayer requests or phrases? Maybe. Well, Nate is, Nate is getting up. Uh, we've been asked to pray for Rogine. Rogine uh, is taking medication and she is very weak. So please be praying for Rogine. Maybe. I want to give praise to everyone, uh, to the Lord, and to everyone who said prayers. Linda and Sarah are doing beautifully. And I have become the taxi driver of Linda's for a month. I, three times a week I take her to rebound to therapy. But they're both doing well, so I want to give praise for that. Praise the Lord and Lord have mercy all in one. Amen. Don, sorry, Molly. Her, her, her great granddaughter, Ella, that lives in uh, Seattle, uh, is having some problems. She has a growth uh, on her brain, and uh, she's passing out and uh, oh, has terrible headaches. And uh, they don't think it's malignant, but they're watching her at this time. But we would like prayers for her. Thank Lord, there are prayers. Uh, I'm not the uh, Bill's not the only one that has a torn rotator cuff. I have just a lot of pain. I'm carrying all the suitcases that I had carried when we were on our trip. But the reason I I, I want to praise the church for all of the support that I've had, but I want to make a request. Next Sunday is hanging of the rings. And so please consider helping with hanging of the greens so that just the very few won't have to do it. Uh, also, I, I've come to appreciate the beautiful handwork of the banners and the decorations from the past that we have. They, they are real treasures. And I think it's just very important that we appreciate the beautiful artwork that's in these uh, banners. And uh, so please, oh, and I'm going to have hot chocolate and cookies in Homer Hall for those of you who stay and help. Okay, thank you. All right. And the hanging of the greens is not the execution of any family. It is really decorating the church for Christmas and Advent. So please come and help. Any other prayer requests or praises? Be Becky? A good friend of mine in Oregon, one of the artists that I've been studying under, um, went to a specialist this week and they discovered she has cancer everywhere and they had to remove one of her legs and they're going to remove the other leg the day before Thanksgiving. Oh, so I'd like to keep her in our family in prayer. What is her name? Debbie. Debbie, who's had an amputation. Okay. So please be praying for Debbie. Father, we rejoice in your great love. We thank you, O Lord, that not only did you create the earth, but you poured out your love and you continue to pour out your love to us. 
in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the opportunities, O oh Lord, which you have given to us to love one another. God, on this day of thanksgiving, we are truly thankful for our nation, for the bounty of harvest, for the freedoms that we enjoy, for the military men and women who help us protect those freedoms and who sacrifice greatly for our, our lives. Lord, we thank you for Alder's Gate and for care centers who take care of our loved ones. And Lord, we lift up to you our confession that we are not truly as grateful as we should be. That Lord, we receive blessings upon blessings and we fail to tell you thank you. Lord, we are here to show our great appreciation for all that you are and all that you do. You have heard our prayers, O oh Lord, our prayers of praise and thanksgiving for healing, our prayer request, O oh Lord, for the strength and healing of our family and friends, for those volunteers needed to decorate the church and to do ministry here. And Father, you know our prayers for the people and the fires, for those affected by war, and for everyone who is seeking a better place and living. God, thank you for the abundance that we were able to share this last Wednesday with families, the fruit, the vegetables, and the turkeys. Help us, O oh Lord, be truly thankful not only on Thursday, but every day this week, this year, and in our lives. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, come with your Holy Spirit and hear our prayers this day. For we ask this in the name of your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of A reading from the Old Testament coming to us from the book of Samuel. Last week we talked about the book of Ruth, and now we'll immediately go to the book of Samuel, how God will deliver a child, a special child, into the arms of a faithful person who asked of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 1, starting in verse 4. Whenever the day came for El Tahiah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife, Peninnah, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in the shy flow, Hannah stood up. Now, Eli, the priest, was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk, and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. And I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. 
Eli answered, Go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they rose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home in Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. from the book of Hebrews. Under the old agreement, the priests stood there day after day, offering sacrifices that could never take away our sins. But Christ gave himself as one sacrifice to God for our sins, then sat down in the place of highest honor at God's right hand, waiting for his enemies to be laid under his feet. For by that one offering, he made forever perfect in the sight of God all those whom he is making holy. And the Holy Spirit testifies that this is so, for he has said, This is the agreement I will make with the people of Israel. Though they broke their first agreement, I will write my laws into their minds, so that they will always know my will, and I will put my laws in their hearts so that they will want to obey them. And then he adds, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Now when sins have once been forgiven forever, they're forgotten. There is no need to offer more sacrifices to get rid of them. And so, dear brothers, now we may walk right into the very holy of holies where God is because of that blood of Jesus. This is the fresh, new, life-giving way which Christ has opened up for us. By tearing the curtain, his human nature to let us into the holy presence of God. And since this great high priest of ours rules over God's household, let us go right in to God himself with true hearts fully trusting him to receive us because we have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and because we have been washed with the pure water of baptism by the Holy Spirit now we can look forward without doubt to the salvation God has promised us and we can tell others it is ours for there is no question that he will do what he says in, in response to all he has done for us, let us outdo each other in being helpful and being kind to each other and doing good. Let us not neglect our church duties and meetings, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is not drawing near. And let us rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel today is about Jesus' teaching. Someday he will return and gather his children in and harvest the land. Listen to Mark chapter 13, starting in verse 1. As he was leaving the temple, one of the disciples said to Jesus, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out, but no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, 
but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's give thanks to God with an old song, the Doxology 734. Glory be to the Father.
Oh no. Yeah, Jesus talks about wars and rumors of war, and do you know what kind of fight that's going to start? It's going to start between me and squirrels. Yeah, have you ever fought with a squirrel? Yeah, they're kind of tricky dudes, right? They like to go out and eat all the seeds out of my feeders. You know, I brought some bird seeds, and I love to feed the birds. I love watching the blue jays and the finches and the cardinals. I love to put out bird seed, but guess what happens? Every single time I put out bird seed, the squirrels come. Yes, they eat them. And not only do they eat them, but they throw all the seeds out of the feeder until they get to the one I want. And then all my feed is on the floor, on the ground. It just really frustrates me. I have spent over $100 having squirrel traps and squirrel preventers from getting to my feeders. And guess what they do now? They just dive from the tree onto the feeder. Yeah. If you've ever fought with squirrels, you know the fight, right? There was a little cartoon that said, uh, uh, I saw a squirrel, and there's a squirrel holding a sign that says, Feeder empty. I knew exactly what that person felt like. <laughs> and every single time, so I buy big bags of feed, and I just keep putting it out for the birds and get my binoculars out, and then there's squirrels. What do you think I should do? Give them what they want? <laughs> Surrender to squirrels? <laughs> yes? That's one option. What do you think I should do? You just packed up lace and seeds into a trap. Oh, lay some seeds into a trap and bring them over to your house, right? <laughs> no. Okay. What else should I do? What should I do to get rid of these squirrels? Should I shoot them? No. Zap them? You know what I did one time is I put cayenne pepper inside the seeds one time to see if it, the squirrels just ate them anyway. They like hot food. You know what I decided to do? I read a scripture that says, God gives blessings to those he loves and those who hate him. That God lets the rain fall on the wicked and the righteous. And so I've done exactly what you decided. I've given up. I have decided this year to feed the squirrels. And so I bought two bags of food. One for the birds, who will get probably a third of it, and the other bag for the squirrels. Now, why would I do that? So they'll just get off your back. So they'll get off my back, and I'll stop yelling at them and throwing things at them. Exactly, so they'll stop messing with me, and I won't have to spend a million dollars. And every time I come out the back door, they don't run up the tree and chatter at me, right? They can actually be many. Do you know God does the same thing? On Thanksgiving, we are going to celebrate the harvest. That God has given food to the earth. And the amazing thing is, God is generous. God has given food to those who love Him and to those who don't. Now, why would God do that? Because He's good. And because He loves us. And so this year, for all of you bird feeders, like me, I want to challenge you to feed the squirrels. And not just to feed the squirrels to keep them out of your feeder. To feed the squirrels to be generous. And that's what we're learning about today. God's generosity. It might cost you a little bit of extra, but I assure you, it'll be a lot less than all the traps and things you have to buy to prevent them. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are loving and kind. Even, Lord, when we are selfish and greedy, you give to us, O oh Lord, as an expression of your goodness. Help us to be grateful, O oh Lord, that you are loving and kind and you feed the squirrels and the birds and all the people, too. Help us, O oh Lord, with the acts and love and generosity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may walk to Children's Church. And if you want to feed the birds, come over to my house. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, you are the great King of the universe. And that by the command of your word, you open and close the gates of heaven. You open and close the windows of heaven and provide rain. You open and close our hearts to receive your word. And Lord, you open and close our bodies for reproduction. Open our hearts and our minds today that we might hear you. In the name of Jesus, amen. <coughs> Have you ever hoped for a promotion, a plan, an object, an idea, a person, only to have all of your plans thwarted? 
And I'm talking about more than just squirrels, because squirrels can be an enemy of their own. Have you ever really set out to get something, and all of a sudden been prevented from doing it? Like you're there to buy that last toy on the shelf for Christmas that all the kids want, and someone steps in front of you and gets it? Have you ever been there? And have you ever so much wanted something, when all of a sudden you hear that someone you don't like has it already? Have you ever had to kind of squeeze out and choke out a congratulations to someone who's gotten a promotion that you wanted? Or to say congratulations and goodwill to someone who has received all that you wanted? Today in our story, that is exactly where Hannah is. We've been talking about the women of the Testament, Old Testament. We've been studying Esther on, Sunday, on Wednesday mornings, and we've talked about Ruth. And today we begin the story of Hannah. And it's not a story that begins really well. It's a story that begins with all of our plans, all of her plans, come to a ride. As that great writing says, right, all the plans of mice and men, right? We set out to make our goals and our plans, and then all of a sudden, something happens. And we know the stories of the Old Testament, how the men and women set out to get married, and they have multiple wives, and sometimes they love one of their wives more than others. And in our story today, Elkiah definitely loves Hannah. He wants to give to Hannah. He gives her double portions, more than his other wife and children. As we hear in Psalm 102, we celebrate and recognize that all these blessings are coming to her. But all of a sudden, we find out the trouble. She's barren. She cannot have children. For ten years, she has tried. And if you've ever had, tried to have children and not been able to conceive, you know the frustration and pain. How today you might even spend hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to get a child and still not receive one. Well, here Hannah is. And Hannah is trying to have a child, but lo and behold, her enemy lives in her own household. It's hard to have a divided household. It's almost as if they are having Thanksgiving and the holidays every single day of the year, right? That day when you have to put up with family and friends that you struggle with. Well, there we find out that Penny Anna has all of the children and sons and daughters, and Hannah has none. And so what does she do for ten years? She prays to the Lord. She goes and begs the Lord for a child, and it really upsets her husband to the point that he remarks about their marriage. But Hannah understands the Jewish identity. To be able to have children, to pass on to children, is to recognize that children are a gift from God. Now I know we often say that. We don't say it at 2 in the morning when a child is throwing up, right? We don't normally say it when we're called to school to discipline them. But we always must remember children are a gift from God. And here Hannah is asking, Lord, please give me a gift. Please provide me a child. And more than just a child, give me a son. When all of a sudden we hear in verse 9 that they are going to the temple of the Lord. Once a year, the people of God were summoned to the temple to give thanks, which is really the whole preface for our day of thanksgiving. Let all the people of the earth be gathered and to declare to the Lord a vow of thank you. And while she is there, she runs into Eli. The one thing that you need to remember about Eli in this story is that he is incompetent. You probably know many a minister who's incompetent, and this is exactly Eli. One who just doesn't do his job well. One that's supposed to be saying prayers but doesn't. One who is supposed to be encouraging but instead sits at the doorpost. And what do we know about his sons? They did all their priestly duties for self-gain. When all of a sudden, here comes Hannah, and what does she do? She comes again, a tenth maybe year, and she makes a vow to the Lord in verse 11. She said to the Lord, Almighty Lord, if you will only look upon me in my misery and remember me, I will do this for you. Now, well, let me give you a word of warning. Never say to the Lord, if you do this, I will do this, because what will God expect? You to complete your vow. It's like oftentimes what we've heard in during World War I. People who are in bombshells, people who are out on, in the military camps, and what do they say? Lord, if you will get me out of this war, I'll, I'll serve you. Well, that is exactly what Hannah does. Lord, if you will just give me a son, I will give him back to you. 
Really, it's to recognize that all things belong to God. Oftentimes, I think we, need, we struggle to learn that. We struggle to identify that. That everything that we have, everything that belongs to us, really belongs to God. And at any moment, it could be gone. Think of the number of times you've heard in the news this week about the people in California who said that they have spent their entire lifetime building up a wealth of stuff, and within minutes, it's gone. And here, all of a sudden, Hannah reminds them, Lord, if you will do this to me, if you will remember me, I will fulfill the Nazarite vow. I will make sure my son does not drink or cut his hair. Probably not something most of us would pledge, right? That our sons will never have a haircut in their lifetime. But here she is in desperation, and she asks from the Lord. And why? Because she knows the Lord is good, the Lord is kind, and the Lord is generous. And so while she is praying, there Eli, the incompetent one, the inept one, all of a sudden sees her mouth moving. And what does he accuse her of? Coming to worship drunk. Remember other people have been accused of that? The disciples on the day of Pentecost? When all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes upon the church and all the people are praying out loud and all of their neighbors think, what? These people are crazy. These people are drunk. And now all of a sudden the disciples had to correct them. And here is the story of Hannah having to correct the priest. I'm not drunk on wine or beer, but I'm pouring out my soul to the Lord. And why? Because of bitterness. Sometimes when we don't get our way, what happens? Not only do we become frustrated and grateful, we become bitter. We become enraged. And if you've ever seen someone who's embittered, you know their anger. God, if God would just run the world like I want it, everything would be fine. Amen? My grandmother often said that. If the President of the United States would just call her, our country would be fine. She would tell him exactly how to run the country and how to get us out of all of our trouble. Sadly, the President's never called. And there it is. Lord, just give me what I ask for. Give me because you're good. Give me because you are generous. And that is when she fulfills her vow. God, if you will do this, I will give you praise. How many times have we done that? Ask the Lord for something, and when the Lord gives it to us, we fail to say thank you. It's a lesson that we've been trying to teach the kids on Wednesday night, isn't it? How many times have we told the kids, when you get your plate of food, say, thank you. But if you ask Clarence, he says we no longer need to teach the children to do that. We need to teach the adults, because the children are doing it just fine. It's the adults aren't doing it. And here Hannah is begging the Lord, if you would just give this to me, I will give it back to you. And that is when the story tells us Eli does his duty. He gives the Aaronic blessing in Numbers chapter 6. Go in peace, God will give it to you. And we find out early on the promise is fulfilled. When they arrive back in Ramah, the Lord remembered his promise. And just like in Genesis 8, God remembered his promise to Noah, and he gives her a son. And the son is Samuel, and the son will become great. The one who is received by the Lord will be named after the Lord's herald. And thereon we will find out, just as God has promised a son to Sarah and Abraham, to Leah and to Rachel, to Mary and Joseph, now Hannah has a son. And what happens? Hannah fulfills her vow. In verses 21 through 28, we'll find out that Hannah will do exactly what she promised, realizing that the one child that God has given to him is really belongs to the Lord. I think as parents, we struggle with that. We often think that because we've had a child, the child is ours. We get to tell it what to do until it turns 18, and then it does whatever it wants. But oftentimes we forget that children are not only a gift from God, but are belong to God too. That our children are destined for God's design, and we need to encourage them in that. And what should we do? We should be good stewards of our time. On Stewardship Sunday, you often expect me to talk about money and to encourage you to give because I need a new pair of shoes, right? That's oftentimes what we think about it. But today I want to encourage you not to think of stewardship just as money, 
But a stewardship is care of everything that God has given you. We use the old English word steward is because we have not modernized it. When the King James Bible and the English Bible was translated, that was a common word. But what is a steward today? It's an asset manager. That's what stewardship is all about. That we entrust our assets, our wealth, our gifts to other people for their care. And what do we expect from them? We expect a return. We expect them to be taken care of. For how many of us would entrust our retirement funds to someone who squanders them at the casino and comes back and tells us we're broke? But that's what God is doing. God is inviting us to be stewards, to be assets managers. And what has He given us? Everything. Everything in the world. And that's what the creation story is all about. That God created the world, and He gave it to Adam and Eve to dominate it, to care for it. And what does He expect? A return. A return of gratitude. A return of things. An offering, as we record throughout this, and gifts. And why? Not simply because God is greedy and He wants things from us, or that He's Santa Claus and whatever we ask Him, He'll give us, but rather that we might become the image of Christ on earth. That our generosity might truly express who we are and what we believe. Because think about it for a moment. God gave us the entire world, and what did we do to it? We messed it up. We messed up our lives. We messed up our world, we messed up our homes, we messed up our families. And what does God do? Does God withhold things from us? No. He gives us gifts again. And why? Because we're the squirrels in God's bird feeder? No, not at all. Because He's good. One of the things I dislike preaching about is money. Because I don't want anyone to think the church is all about money. The church is really about mission. And that is what God has given us. A mission to embody His Word for the world. And remember the one thing that He did do. He didn't withhold His own Son that we might have salvation. In a few minutes, we'll be invited to come forward and give our pledge cards. This is a tradition in the church, and the reason why we've done that is because after the Revolutionary War, we stopped charging people rent. Pew rent. The way the churches used to be funded is a tax on the county, and the ability to be able to sit and worship. Everyone was required to come to worship, and what you had to do is you had to pay a tax to be able to sit down. If you didn't pay your pew tax, what did you have to do? You had to stand in the balcony. Praise God, none of you are standing in the balcony today, amen? And so it changed that now it becomes a free will offering, an expression of generosity, and you know exactly what the Bible says that we should be cheerful about it, that we should be generous, and that we should be givers. The pledge card you fill out is really between you and the Lord. I don't see it. The leaders don't see it. No one sees it except for the stewardship secretary who writes it down, simply to keep track of what your pledge is. If you want to make a promise to God that you'll give everything that you own and possess this year, praise the Lord. If not, you can give proportionately. 10, 20, 50, or even 80%. The idea of stewardship is this. God has given you everything that you have, including your life and your children. God expects a return, an expression of gratitude. What will be your expression of gratitude this year for all that God has given you and plans to give you in the future, including His kingdom? In a few minutes, I'll invite you forward. I've been asked to give you at least four minutes of quiet time that you can talk with your spouse and fill out this card. Then we will stand and sing a song and bring your pledge cards forward that we might offer them up to God as expression of our gratitude for His generosity. Heavenly Father, thank You for everything that You've given to us. Thank You for the earth, for Your spirit, for our bodies, our spouses, our family, our friends, our children, our homes, our bank accounts, our retirement, our opportunities to experience wonder and blessing. But most of all, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your willingness to give it all, your own blood for us and for our salvation. Heavenly Father, as we make these pledges today, 
We see them as an offering and a sacrifice of things for all that you have given and all you promised to give. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our pledge cards are completely voluntary. You don't have to do it if you don't want. It's between you and the Lord. If you are a guest or a visitor this day, I invite you simply to watch. Watch as the people of this church come forward to express their love and their gratitude to the Lord. Let us take a few minutes of silence to prepare our hearts for the Lord.
to be able to take care of us. And so let us sing our song of faith and commitment. God will take care of you, stanzas one and three.